Today is December 31, the last day in 2019. This is the news on PVCJ. I'm Simone Absalom. Fireworks are an international tradition for ringing in the new year, and there has been a growing trend in Jamaica for the private use of fireworks. But Assistant Commissioner of Police, ACP, Elon Powell, is reminding persons that special permits must be granted for the use of fireworks. Every, every event that you have, it requires permits, and the permits are granted uh, in collaboration with the JCF, the Fire Department, Health Department, and the, the municipal councils. So those are the unit, those are the, the entities that are responsible for providing permits for each event. So they would have to do an assessment to see whether or not fireworks can take place in that particular location. And once the permits are given, it can be done. But they will have to ensure the safety of those who are not only at the event, but in the immediate environment. It's not advisable that people do it in any and every area, and that is why permits are needed, so that inspections can be done, and, and you can get certificates to say, yes, this is a safe place. Okay, so okay. People, should, people should not do it without the requisite permits. Also, ACP Powell added that the police have the right to turn off music that is causing a disturbance to residents regardless of the extended hours granted under the Noise Abatement Act for the holiday period. Uh, there has been a two-hour extension. However, there's, the, the law still says that it should not be audible beyond 100 meters. So once the sound is audible beyond a hundred meters it can be turned off and will be turned off by the police and, and then the persons who, oper who operate who are operating it can be charged and the, and the, and the sound system seized and taken to court. ACP Powell also took the opportunity to wish citizens a safe and prosperous new year and encouraged their continued compliance with the law. He was speaking at a recent JIS think tank. Members of the public are being advised of traffic changes in preparation for the annual fireworks on the waterfront in downtown Kingston, which will be hosted by the Urban Development Corporation on December 31. According to the police, as of 2 p.m. today, December 31, no left turns will be allowed onto Ocean Boulevard. Persons entering the Bank of Jamaica delivery chute and parking lot will have access via Nether Solar Place and Ocean Boulevard, Church Street and Ocean Boulevard. The police added that beginning at 4 p.m., the following intersections, including Port Royal Street, will be closed. Church Street, King Street, Orange Street, Princess Street, West Street, Petron Street, Ocean Boulevard. Two-way traffic will, however, be permitted as follows to facilitate entrance and exiting to and from parking areas only from the intersection of Church Street and Port Royal Street to JCC Multi-Story Car Park, the intersection of Orange Street and Port Royal Street to Orange Street Multi-Story Car Park, the intersection of Princess Street and Port Royal Street to Digicel Car Park the intersection of West Street and Port Royal Street to West Street Car Park. The police advised that the UDC will be enacting a park and ride system and will provide transportation to and from the venue. Licensed firearm holders are being reminded that there are penalties to be faced if caught participating in any form of reckless activities during the festive season. The Firearm Licensing Authority, in a statement, said participation in gun salutes is an offense under the Firearms Act, and no firearm license holder should participate in gun salutes on any occasion. The FLA said 
Failure to adhere to the rules and regulations of Firearms Act may result in the firearm being seized by the police. Prosecution and immediate revocation of the firearm license in accordance with the law. The ban on styrofoam produce comes into effect this week. Despite the pleas for extension, Jamaica Manufacturers and Exporters Association President Richard Pandoi is not convinced an extension of the timeline for implementation of the styrofoam ban would have made a difference. The ban on styrofoam food containers will come into effect on Wednesday. It was announced in 2018 to give businesses a chance to adjust, but several organizations, including the JMEA, had called for an extension. Mr. Pandoe says he believes a year was a short time to prepare. However, he does not believe manufacturers and retailers will have been any readier, even with an extension. The National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA, will be partnering with the Social Development Commission, SDC, and Rural Agricultural Development Authority to educate the public on the benefits of composting. Composting is a form of waste disposal wherein organic waste decomposes naturally under oxygen-rich conditions. NSWMA's Executive Director, Audley Gordon, made the statement at a recent press conference at the Ministry of Local Government and Community development on Hagler Park Road in Kingston. And then composting. We have now um, uh, started um, putting together the partnership between SDC and RADA, where we'll go into every household across Jamaica if needs be, the schools, the churches, everybody to talk composting. Why? Over 70% of what we currently take to a disposal site, based on our latest garbage characterization survey, over 70% is compostable. We don't need to be carrying such a valuable material to dump off somewhere when it has such good commercial value and is very good soil nutrients. So we want to push that conversation um, also. Mr. Gordon noted that based on the latest garbage characterization survey, more than 70% of what is taken to disposal sites is compostable. Mr. Gordon also urged Jamaicans to reduce, reuse and recycle. This, he said, would ease the strain on the agency's waste disposal efforts. Meanwhile, the executive director said that under the NSWMA's enhanced dengue mitigation program, 500 loads of bulk waste have been removed from 320 districts. Mr. Gordon assured that the agency will continue to partner with the Ministry of Health and Wellness to contain the spread of dengue. And this is significant because we have a duty at the NSWMA to ensure that we rid the community of the excess um, um, garbage and the bulky waste is a critical component of that. And we have done quite a decent job in the first phase of our enhanced dengue mitigation program. All of this would be to naught if we don't have the full participation of our fellow brothers and sisters out in Jamaica. Personal responsibility, therefore, have to be part of the conversation. The Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management, ODPEM, will train an additional 200 micro, small and medium-sized enterprise owners in business continuity planning in the coming year. In 2018, the ODPEM collaborated with the United Nations Development Program to train more than 200 MSME owners in business continuity planning. The series of two-day training sessions held across the island engaged persons in simulation exercises, discussions, case studies and development of business continuity plans. Participants included chefs, cosmetologists, mechanics, store owners, barbers and other artisans. The U.S. dollar on Monday, December 30, ended trading at $133.48, up by a dollar and three cents. That's according to the Bank of Jamaica's daily exchange trading summary. The Canadian dollar ended trading at $100.70, down from $102.47, while the British pound sterling ended trading at $170.64, up from $170.44. In regional news, we look to Dominica where on Sunday, 
68 families got keys to new homes in Cotton Hill in the cottage constituency of Portsmouth. The new residences from form part of the government's housing expansion program. Parliamentary representative for the cottage constituency, which includes Lagoon, Portsmouth, Reginald Austry, explained that the selection process was not easy. The selection process was not easy. It's never easy when you have many people and few things to share. And somebody will always believe that they were left behind. And it should have been Jane instead of Mary. And it should have been Matthew instead of Mark. And that discussion, I'm sure, will continue after tonight's presentation. But just to give you the assurance, and the Prime Minister may want to articulate that, that this is just the first phase of the project. There are several other projects like this ongoing throughout the country, the eastern part in particular. And there are many more where contracts have been signed and grounds have been broken for such construction. But eventually, We'll return to this place and we'll have another handing over ceremony for those of us who are not captured in this, uh, in this phase. Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt urged residents to be grateful for this investment. And he stressed that the construction was done at a high standard. Because this is a major investment. There are not many parts of this world where you can get a key to an apartment and not pay anything for it. Some build some apartments in town and some apartments in town, but never had this national housing program. And maintaining the same level of construction across the country. We're not saying, well, you here in Lago are less than somebody in other parts of Dominica. No, we're saying that we're all human beings and we're building the same quality of homes and residences for all of us across Dominica, elevating people, improving on the aesthetics of these communities. And so the same construction method and technology which was employed in the construction of these homes is the same that was used to construct the Kempinski Hotel. Understand this. This is a five-star hotel. Fresh off a particularly tumultuous election campaign which saw his Dominica Labour Party increase its hold on power, Prime Minister also touted the accomplishments of his administration. There are some people who didn't vote for me because I'm helping the poor, the less fortunate. And I do not know, I don't know how they sleep at night, I'm serious, because they must be tormented for, for, for not voting for me. Now, I know many of them are regretting that they did the wrong, they made the wrong choice and something. <laughs> but, but the Lord provides for confession. <laughs> because the truth is, I'm not even talking about what this government has done in 20 years to rescue this country and to bring development to this country. I'm talking about what this government was able to do in two years after this hurricane. The Cotton Hill housing project has nine buildings in total, with each having two bedroom units and three bedroom units built with a modern and pristine design that complements the environment of Portsmouth, Dominica. Like other housing projects on the island, the Cotton Hill housing project was developed by Montreal Management Consultants Estate. Like the other housing projects, the Cotton Hill apartments were also constructed fully with reinforced concrete, impact-resistant windows and solar water heating features. In other regional news, an earthquake rumbled through parts of Dominica and the French islands of Martinique and Guadeloupe on Monday. The Trinidad-based Seismic Research Center of the University of the West Indies has reported that the quake, with a magnitude of 3.9, occurred at 11.10 a.m. local time. It was located latitude 15.79 north longitude, 61.41 west, and at a depth of 10 kilometers. It was felt 53 kilometers south, southeast of Point Peter in Guadeloupe, 54 miles north of Rousseau in Dominica capital and the 137 north-northwest of Fort de France in Martinique. The SRC said there were no immediate reports of injuries 
or damage. In sports, we begin with athletics. Triple jumper, silver medalist Shanika Ricketts will be slowing down this season. Ricketts competed in 15 meets in 2019 as she built a season that saw her win the World Athletics Diamond League final and a silver medal at the World Championship. However, her husband and coach Kerry Lee Ricketts says she won't jump as often in 2020. He says this is because she will be building the technical advances made Building on, that is, the technical advances made in the last campaign. And over to football, as Jamaica College Technical Director Davion Ferguson has reiterated his commitment to the Old Hope Road-based school. Ferguson, who accepted the role ahead of the school boy football season successfully met expectations first time of asking, handing the Dark Blues a 27th hold on the Issa Manning Cup title. This followed their failed campaign last year in a bid for a sixth straight Manning Cup title after securing five titles on the trot during Miguel Coley's decorated five-year stint, which ended in 2017. And that's the news. Thanks for watching. On behalf of the entire production team and staff here at the PBCJ, we wish you a happy new year 2020.